Well, first of all, I would like to uh, thank Unite uh, for organising this uh, demonstration today. I've been campaigning against these blacklisting construction companies, both as a trade union organiser and I'm proud to stand here as the leader of the Scottish Labour Party protesting against blacklisting construction companies as well. One of the people that's here today is a human face of blacklisting. John came in to see me at the trade union offices in 2013. He'd been sent a letter asking him to confirm his national insurance number. What we were then able to show was that John, who'd worked at Kishon in Wester Ross in 1981, had been blacklisted by the construction industry and hadn't been able to work as a welder in the industry since that time. So there are real faces, real people, whose lives have been turned upside down by these companies. Right, United Scotland are here today calling for a full public inquiry in Scotland into blacklisting. Looking at the role played by the state and let's have an honest debate about the role of the security services. We call on blacklisting to be a criminal offence with punishment fit for the crime. And send by those companies that engaged in blacklisting from contracts paid for by you, the taxpayers. We need more than warm words of comfort from our government. We need a safe, transparent construction industry and an economy built on the values of fair work and equality. And we will not rest until we have achieved justice for those blacklisted workers. So we are reiterating our, man to, our demand today to the Scottish MSPs to work with us and deliver a fair and just workplace for all workers and put an end to this corrupt, heinous, draconian practice of blacklisting once and for all. You're right against blacklisting, brothers and sisters. You're right against blacklisting. This has been widespread and there are people who want to draw a line under it and, and say that it's historic and it's something we can we can put behind us. But as we've heard from the speakers today, contemporary blacklisting still continues. It's maybe not in the form of the consulting association, but it's still there. And I full heartedly support the calls for justice. And I would urge any MSPs who are standing about today to sign Neil Findlay's motion in the Parliament. Because what is the point in having this Scottish Parliament if we're not going to get justice for blacklisted workers and their families? As the daughter of a, a health and safety officer, uh, my dad would be telling his grave if I wasn't out here today supporting you. Um, I, I briefly worked for one of the companies that are uh, on the shady list of blacklisters uh, when I worked in construction myself until they made me redundant. But this is about you know people who were calling out health and safety breaches, not just for themselves, but to keep their colleagues and other people working on site safe. This should be a criminal offence. It is criminal what's happened. And there's absolutely no way that those who have involved themselves in this should make a profit uh, on the back of the taxpayer. So whatever we can do, you know that you've got our full support. Livelihoods have been robbed. Lives have been changed. The course of people's lives has been changed irrevocably by these companies and by their actions. There are real human tragedies behind these stories. And it's not just simply a case of a few bad apples. It has been an entire rotten system from top to bottom, operated by every single major construction company, not just for a few years, but operated for decades and for generations. My name's John Curry, I'm an electrician. Yeah, I've been for the last 35 years. I became increasingly aware of me that uh, something was happening, although we couldn't prove anything until possibly five years back when Unite managed to get access to some files which my name was on. We went from there, we ended up the Royal Courts of Justice a couple of years back. Um, we got some compensation. I've got to say that compensation hardly covers for all the hardship and suffering in the last 35 years. All the strain it puts in relationships, marriage, etc., finances, it's been an absolute nightmare. Blacklisting is still happening. It's happening through agencies. 
major contractors are using the agencies to continually blacklist people. And we know it's happening. Uh, the only way to get around it is if we send today no public contracts for blacklisting companies. I've been in here since 2011 and there's a couple of groups of people who uh, ins have inspired me during that period. Yesterday we debated in the Parliament um, the issue of the mesh injured women and those women are absolutely fantastic campaigners. But so are you guys because from the very start of this, every time Unite have asked you to be here, you have been here, you have delivered the goods and we've put the pressure on every, every single occasion. And when we first spoke about this, nobody in that building was talking about it, nobody cared about it. But we kept the pressure up week in, week out, month in, month out, year in, year out. And uh, we've got to where we are today. And we were told that contracts wouldn't be going to blacklisters. We were told that justice would be delivered. We were told that it would all be different and the procurement rules had changed and that guidance would sort it out. And you remember back to when the procurement bill went through, I moved an amendment against blacklisting and the Scottish Government voted it down. All of them. And they voted it down because they said, we'll bring in guidance and that'll fix it. Well, has it? No. Has it? No. Nothing. no. Fixed nothing. People are still being blacklisted, but the biggest scandal of all is that all of those companies who ruined those lives are getting more contracts. Day in, day out, they're getting contracts. They're building schools, they're building colleges, they're building hospitals, they're building major pieces of infrastructure. Uh, if we look at, the, for example, the train lines, we've got BAM laying the uh, electrification at the end of the Glasgow train line. We've got the Dumfries Hospital being built by, who is it down there? Langerort. We've got uh, Balfour Beatty doing the, uh, the Aberdeen bypass. All of these companies up to their neck in this scandal being handed your money, your money, to get more contracts to profit from. We have to have that public inquiry because McAlpines and Langerort and Gallifer Tri and all the rest of them are involved with all of the hubcos and they're screwing us. Chat Swift who was the HR director from BAM Nuttall, gave evidence to the Scottish Affairs Select Committee a couple of years ago, in which he confirmed that BAM, amongst others, and I'll quote him, used the consulting association for all major projects. The Scottish Government released guidelines just recently on blacklisting, where they said, and I'll quote them, exclusion from public contracts of companies which engage in blacklisting. So my question to the procurement division of the Scottish Government today is, yeah, yeah. how many companies have you excluded? Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you use the leverage that you've got? Why don't you use those powers to exclude when many of these companies have been found guilty of being involved in a blacklisting conspiracy? Because you can't just condemn this practice, you've got to do something about this practice. Because I tell you as well, it's not just the act of blacklisting, it's the shame of the cover-up of the act of blacklisting that we need to expose today. And in my view, democracy itself is on trial. And that's why I am pleased to support this campaign organised by, by Unite, and pleased to support their demand. Let's have a public inquiry, let's clean up this mess, let's get these companies to own up, and finally, and finally, let's get these companies to pay up. Thanks very much well, for your support. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you.